I've always believed that every day you choose to hold an asset. You are also choosing to buy it. Would I buy our buildings at the price Blackstone was quoting? Nope. Sam Zell. Sam Zell wrote this quote. Uh, it was in his in his book. Am I being too subtle? I think it's a uh, it's a pretty interesting quote and concept. What you think? He is arguably one of the greatest real estate investors of all time. And if you have not read the book, Am I Too Subtle? I would suggest you go pick it up. Whether you believe in how he built his business or not, you should 100% go pick it up. Listen to it. It is a solid read and it's an even better listen. But more importantly, let's talk about this quote below that Jason just read for us that I have always believed every day you choose to hold an asset, you are also choosing to buy it. Would I buy our buildings at the place price Blackstone was quoting? Nope. What's he talking about there? Every day you have you take the effort to rebuy your property. Every single day you get up. If you're not selling, you're buying it over and over and over again. So then when that one person comes by and offers you a price and you're like, oh my God, I never thought my property was worth this much money. That is the time to capitalize on selling your property. If you're not willing to pay that same price for that property to earn those dividends, then you should 100% go ahead and sell that property at that time and go find the next deal that's going to allow you to have that same feeling of being, yes, I want to own this property every single day. I think there's a misconception that there's a lot of real estate investors that state they're legacy owners or we just... <laughs> We, we own things. We never sell. All we do is buy, 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 and we never sell. Um, you know, you might have heard Warren Buffett state, you know, st state that because he doesn't want to pay taxes. Um, and if you ever looked at the, I don't know, whatever that charter graph is, where you have like a high interest rate return day trader versus a low interest rate return uh, buy and hold investor, the buy and hold investor, in essence, outperformed the day trader that was getting higher rates of return because they weren't paying taxes. Um, and they were just compounding their returns over and over and over. I think we all agree with that. And I think we all believe in that. But that being said, there's always an exit on every transaction, right? Like, let's say you buy a value add property. Um, and you get it at a very good price, you improve it, you get it you know, fixed up in order to sell or you get it fixed up uh, and you have good quality tenants in there. Like eventually, you know, you could go from that thing being worth a hundred thousand dollars to $200,000 within like a short period of time. But then it might take a lifetime for that thing to be worth significantly more, right? Like eventually, you know, it's go, it's increasing, increasing, increasing. And then it's just not going to increase like that forever. You're not going to go from a hundred thousand, 200,000 to three, four, five, a million, two million as quick as you went from that hundred to 2000, right? Now, when you sell, are you leaving some money on the table? Or are you paying, you know, shorter long-term capital gains? That's possible. That's possible. But potentially it's giving you buying power and gives you the ability to be more opportunistic on potentially a better asset. I remember one of the best, uh, the best advice I ever got from a successful investor early on was, most real estate investors start with trash assets and they constantly upgrade their assets. You should be on the on the move to continuing to up your asset game bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think a lot of real estate investors start with like lower end, maybe like city properties or, or income properties or properties that they can just afford, right? If you only have $5,000 to start with, you're not going to buy a million dollar property at the beginning. You might start with a 40 or 50 or $100,000 asset with the goal of always working up and working up and working up. Like, Let's say you double the value of an asset. If you have an asset worth $100,000 and you double it, you have $200,000. That's great. Now, imagine if you had the exact, you know, you had another asset that was worth $2 million and you doubled that. You made four, you know, you got from $2 million to $4 million. You made $2 million profit doing the exact same activity. The only difference was it was a better and bigger asset. Yep, that's 100% true. And when we look at it, you know, we started with $15,000 buying single family real estate in the heart of East Baltimore. And today we have grown to commercial assets and our portfolio value size is way bigger than that. So then the question becomes, if we sell and we had a lot larger capital pool, could I could we take our company to a much higher asset value? Can we buy better properties? Can we continue to grow in a fashion that makes sense and is strategic with the capital that we have available 
to deploy. When we first started, we never raised capital for investors. We couldn't. Today, we have the ability to raise capital. We have the ability to buy and sell assets at a much higher velocity, at a much larger scale. And it, it lends to the structure that we've built in our company. So when Sam Zell is talking about you rebuy your asset every day, that's a great way to look at it. You know, we've talked about dump your 20%. It's the same mindset going in, looking at your portfolio, what performs, what do you want to own, what's still at a good intrinsic value, and what should you sell today? So, you know, take the time, carve out a time every month, every quarter, every year, look at the numbers, take the time, go through your portfolio. You know, we hear a lot from real estate investors, there's nothing for me to do. Well, and then you hear a real estate investor that, you know, hey, this vendor messed up my auto pay and now I owe them 30 grand. Or you have an investor that tells you, oh, everything's fine. And then you go to the property and it's a complete dumpster fire. There is something for you to do every day to continue to optimize your portfolio. And as you optimize your portfolio, you're going to get to a point where you say, okay, if Blackstone's willing to give me a million dollars for this property that I paid a hundred grand for, and I only make a hundred grand a year off of, that's 10 years of cash flow. This goes back to check it out in our channel, the velocity of capital that allows you to continue to grow, that allows you to unlock the equity. We've always been equity rich. Uh, Jason, if you can find that quote where Sam Zell talks about having billions and billions and billions of dollars of real estate and he can't make payroll on Friday. And you're like, dude, how does this guy have all this? But you know what? There's times we've been in situations like that where it's like, holy shit, man, we own a lot of real estate. But then it's like, yo, how are we going to pay this? How are we going to do that? Yo, maybe we, we should sell. Our balance sheets are ridiculous. Maybe we do need an equity pod. We do need a win. You know, because sometimes when you don't unlock that equity, even though the cash flow is coming in, mm -hmm. there's something about taking home a $50,000 payday, a $500,000 payday, a $5 million payday that changes your mindset to say, wow. And then it's like, cool, I was making, let's use the five the $50,000 example, I was making 500 bucks a month, $6,000 a year. Now I have $50,000 that I can invest and get 10% on and make the same money without the headaches. Or I can take that $50,000 and turn that into $200,000 of assets that produce me $2,000 a month. So taking that time, really analyzing your portfolio, knowing what you should buy, what you should sell on an everyday basis is a great way to look at it. Uh, and really uncovering the unlocking the potential of your real estate portfolio. You, you, you got you got to treat it like an investment. You got to treat it like a portfolio. There's a time to buy. There's a time to hold. There's a time to sell. Uh, I think Sam Zell made a great point. If uh, you're choosing to hold an asset as of let's call it today, you're choosing to have bought that same asset with what you have in place as of today, right? He's using the word buy and hold um, as kind of this as the same thing. And there's always a time that it ends up, ends up selling. You're not selling out to the man. If you sell, there's nothing wrong with that. Think about the, think about how much more opportunity you could potential have. There's a life expectancy on properties, a single family residential one unit house or condo or townhouse can only get you so far, right? Even if it's paid off, even if it's spitting out good cash flow every month, there's still a limit of what it can do. You have to do the math to see if it makes sense. If you have hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in potential equity, you could possibly you could probably do more than that than whatever that property is spitting out cash flow. You can also use 1031s if you're so anti anti taxes, right? But there's also ways that you could potentially pay the tax and then buy another asset and and do some sort of a seller accelerated depreciation plan, right? Different topic. 100. Different 100. You know, di different topic point being is it's something to think about and too many real estate investors are set in their ways and they're not thinking logically they have their mind set up already there's a time to buy there's a time to hold there's a time to sell and guess what everything is for sale at the right price remember that hey guys listen smash that like button if you enjoyed this content or any other content that we're doing we'd certainly appreciate it ian and i are out here you know you know we talk regularly these are topics that we're commonly discussing. So we like hopping on camera and help everybody else out and just kind of talking through real life scenarios. So again, if you like this topic or any other topics or videos that we've done, feel free to spread the word. We certainly appreciate it, guys.